What's up, Tech Heart? How's everybody doing tonight? The video today is going to be a little bit different than we normally record. I was impressed by a new YouTuber, Alpha Obeisance. I'll put it down here somewhere. And I think he has around a thousand subscribers, but he's a home labber like many of us are. And I often come on here and I talk to you guys about Image or different services that you can run or how to get your websites going and all the different services that make up my home lab. But Alpha was showing normal home labbers, you know, people new to this stuff, how he set up his lab and how he learned and how he failed to do certain things and, and how he moved into different servers and um, how as he came into larger servers, how to use IPMI tool and fan curves and how to boot from NVMe drives. And it's just a really cool channel because he talks to you and me. You know, we're not enterprise guys. I sometimes talk about I'm running in production. You know, my true ass is really good, but you know, I'm at home here. So I'm going to take the camera today and I'm going to show you my home lab. I'm going to show you how it sits today. I'm going to show you some upgrades that I have coming and I'm going to show you where it lives because I don't have a big rack. Now, Alpha Obisans just got a new rack and it's looking really cool, but my servers currently live underneath a spare bedroom bed. So I got a new server and I'm, I'm resetting all that up. So I removed the bed off of it and I'll have an opportunity to take you into the room and show you my current setup and the upgrades that I'm about to do. After I show you the space, I'm going to come on the computer and show you exactly what my home lab runs. What does it do? Well, it does a whole bunch of stuff and we have Proxmox clusters. I have three different Proxmox servers and a PBS, a backup server, a Proxmox backup server, and all sorts of services that run on that uh, infrastructure. So I'm inviting you in, man. I'm gonna take you into the spare bedroom. Nobody goes in there, baby. So come along with TechHeart, and I'm gonna share with you my home lab. Please check out Alpha Obisans. It's a really cool channel. And uh, I wanna share my lab with you. So I'm gonna get behind the camera now, and let's walk on into the home lab. P.S. I'm recording this audio off of my phone tonight. Some people don't love my Yeti Blue uh, microphone, and so I'm testing out different things. If it sounds terrible, bear with me. When we get into the part where I show you what's running on the home lab, I'll switch over to the mic, and I want you guys to let me know which is the better of the two options. For now, though, let's dive in. Woohoo! We gotta go through the front room a little bit. Now, normally, this bed is all made up nice and neat, but I have it propped up against the wall over there. Um, I'm going to point out a couple things. This is the new server. This is the upgrade we're going to do. That's a Dell R730XD, but we're not going to talk about that today. Oh, let me get set up. Look at that rat's nest, will you? Now, what we're looking at here is the two main servers. This is an R330, a Dell R330. Uh, runs Proxmox. Has 64 gigabits of RAM and the best CPU that server can take. Then we have a Dell R320. It actually has more cores. I think it has 20 cores. I'm sorry. It has 10 cores, 20 threads. It has like 192 gigabytes of RAM though. Uh, so those are two Proxmox servers. Over here, this old Dell tower, that just has a bunch of hard drives thrown in it and it runs PBS, Proxmox backup server. I have a router over there. And uh, as I mentioned, my Proxmox cluster has three nodes. Well, where's the other node? If you spin it on over here, you can kind of see a Raspberry Pi. That's also running Proxmox, and it's just a quorum node. I have some smart home stuff plugged in, a hub, a really cheap switch over there. I got to upgrade to 10 gigabit. Currently, my 10 gigabit connections just go directly from the one server to the other. So all the VMs that are inside of these two servers can talk at the 10 gigabit speeds, but I don't have a 10 gigabit switch in the mix just yet. As I was doing some upgrades, these wires used to be a lot better, but I recently added the R320. And as stated, I'm now adding in R730XD. XL or XD? I think it's XD. So this is my setup. But now for the fun part, let's go see on the computer what it does, baby. 
when I upgrade and I get this R730 XD in the mix, I'm probably going to remove that Proxmox backup server and the uh, R320 will be the Proxmox backup server. Another thing to mention, uh, this is normally really nice and the bed's all made and all the servers are, under, are underneath. We're going to have to add this server back there somewhere. And so they'll all live under there, out of the way, and that tower will be out of the mix, so that'll be cleaner. But I'm going to catch you guys back at the computer, and let's see what's in this big mess of wires, baby! All right. Okay, guys, I have two terminals pulled up, just in case we need them to SSH into anything. But we're going to mainly be looking at the browser over here. Uh, this is Proxmox. I would say this is the heart of my home lab. And if you come over here to the leftmost tab, you can see PVE, PVE2, and PVE3. PVE is my main Dell R330 server. These are all different VMs and containers that I have in that Proxmox server. And I have four that are running all the time. I have a Docker Portainer VM that holds all my different Docker stacks. I have the techheart.life website, and I think there's an Nginx, an Nginx proxy on there. I have my DBS that still runs, 20 for beers. And then uh, these other two nodes, this is the Dell R320, and this is that Raspberry Pi, which is just a quorum node, meaning it's the third Proxmox node. So even if one of the other servers go down, we always have a quorum or the cluster can talk to itself. Uh, inside that Raspberry Pi, it does run a Pi VPN, so I can access my home lab if I'm remote or away. And the Dell R320, which is PVE2, is mainly all dedicated to my TrueNAS. I pass its PERC330 RAID card directly to the TrueNAS VM. So you can select any one of your nodes. Here's PVE2. Uh, you can see what's going on on this node. Now this shows high RAM usage because I pass 128 gigabytes directly to TrueNAS. And um, it's non-ballooning, so that means it literally gets all that memory. But you can see the CPU usage is low. Uh, we can go check out PVE, the main node, and that's the Dell R330 server. Very low CPU usage and decent RAM usage. Uh, PVE3 is just that Raspberry Pi, and it really doesn't have much going on at all. 0% CPU. One little thing that's different when you have a cluster, uh, you can control all your nodes through the main data center and see your different cluster stuff. So all that means is I have three servers making up my Proxmox. Proxmox is a really good heart for your home lab if you want to run VMs and containers. You can do it on one server or you can create a Proxmox cluster like I've done. And if we get a summary up here, this is a summary of all three nodes. We're running four virtual machines and three LXC containers. And then it shows you uh, the usage across all three nodes. So anyway, Proxmox is really good if you're getting into home labbing. It can be the main heart of your system. However, let's go take a look at one other thing I'm running. This is called HomeR. And HomeR is just like a dashboard, basically. Um, you can add whatever you want to it. But this kind of has most of what I'm running on my different Proxmox nodes. So one big thing is my TrueNAS. And I can click that and it'll pull up TrueNAS. Uh, as stated, this is a VM that runs on my Dell R320 PVE2, Proxmox node 2. And this is basically all that server does. We have uh, 47 terabytes of usable space it has four 18 terabit hard drives in a RAID ZFS1. So that's my TrueNAS. That's one of the big things that I run. Um, I have my Plex. Actually, too, just to point out, my Plex runs on the TrueNAS VM, which is a little weird, but I wanted to have one application. And I thought it was good to throw right on the NAS because that's where my media is stored. I can view that on all my televisions. That Dell tower that I showed you guys, that's a Proxmox backup server. Let me pull it up and get logged in. So my PBS, my backup server, if I go down here to my data store, it backs up everything. So this backs up my entire NAS, all my VMs, and I have like four disks installed because on my old NAS, I used to have a four terabyte and a six terabyte share. So these are actually physical hard drives and I back up those shares directly to it. But I have a 16 terabit hard drive in here that's my main PBS backup. And if I go into here, this one backs up all of my containers and VMs and another files-based backup for my new backup XTB. That's like my two four terabyte, six terabyte drives. 
and this is my new share, but it's also all of my VMs that I back up. And uh, it's really nice, like if you push plus, uh, you can tell it how many to save and, and whatnot. Each one of these is a, is a different VM or container backup. And so PBS is a really cool stack to run if you rely on Proxmox, as it allows you to back up all of your different VMs that you run in production. It's really easy too, if, if one ever goes down or you have a failure, I mean, I can just roll back. You literally just click on one of these backups and you can click restore and Bob's your uncle, baby. So Proxmox backup server, if you wanna be able to back up that awesome data. I have a really large torrent stack. It has Qubit Torrent, Overseer, Prowlar, Radar, Sonar, LiDAR. And I have another video, maybe I'll put a little box up top and you can check out creating my torrent stack. I run Bitwarden for my passwords. Image is really cool. Let me get logged in. I gotta upgrade to a new version. Maybe I can even show you that. So here's my image server. And this is like an iCloud or Google Photos replacement. It's literally self-hosted. Any photos that I take on my cell phone, once I hit my Wi-Fi, it updates this image every single day. Here are some photos of my new Dell R730 server that I'll be doing an upgrade to. I showed you guys that earlier. But uh, image is really awesome, and you don't have to rely on iCloud for your photos or videos ever again. I'm really, really impressed with this one. This is nice to add into any home lab. So this server though, this is that Dell R730 that's gonna give us 12 3.5 inch uh, hard drive bays, two 2.5 inch in the rear, and enough PCI to add anything else that we want from NVMe boot drives to graphics cards. It already has two 10 gigabyte ethernet ports and two one gigabyte ethernet ports. And I'm excited about this machine. It's really, really nice. Has two CPUs, 24 cores, 56 threads, and I'll be replacing two of my servers with this bad boy in the near future. But that's Image, and it's a really kick butt software to run if you don't want to rely on iCloud. Portainer, this controls my entire Docker slash Portainer VM. Let me get in here. I can go in here and I'll click on my local, that's like my main portainer. And this will show you I have four different Docker Compose stacks, totaling 20 Docker containers. And uh, this runs like my home assistant. Oh, I didn't show you home assistant. I must not have that in this menu over here. I'm like forgetting a lot of stuff I'm running. It also has different stacks. So I run archive box, image, my torrent stack, Bitwarden, which is actually Vault Warden. Let me show you that uh, home assistant real quick. I forgot about it. Home Assistant. Home Assistant controls my entire smart home setup. Smart lights to my front doorbell. It even shows me some information about my servers, but it only allows me to do iDRAC 8, so I can't add the R330 or the R730. There's all my different smart lights that I have throughout the house. All my different switches and my Sonos speakers. Climate control and my front ring doorbell. You can get really advanced in this setup too for Home Assistant. You can make it really nice. I don't mess with it all that much, but it's here. I also run Archive Box. This allows me to archive websites and URLs. I'm into vintage computing, so this allows me to back up, download, or archive different web pages and URLs. I think I have something like 1,100 websites that are backed up, but that's Archive Box. And I know I'm forgetting some stuff. I have a speed logger that runs on that Dell R320, and it basically just tracks my speed over time. Internet speed, that's it. Right around 600. That's okay, right? We spike up to a gigabyte, they could give it to me more often, couldn't they? But the main thing is Proxmox. That's the heart of my entire system. And I think with the addition of that Dell R730, we're gonna be able to do way bigger things. So guys, what are you running in your home lab? Why don't you post down below and let me know what your favorite self-hosted projects are and what you use your home lab for. This was mine. There'll be more to come on that Dell R730 upgrade. And thanks for hanging out, rock stars. Whoa.